Hi, so in a recent report from the New Zealand Herald on May the 26th, 2014, we have a title here, Back to Basics, Call to Fight Bug Threat. Scientists call for revamp of hospitals and new generations of effective antibiotics. Now, as it so happens, I work in a hospital, in a hospital laboratory, pretty much doing exactly what you see here. And I, for one, can tell you categorically that the threat of superbugs is growing exponentially fast every day. We currently have four superbugs at the moment that we're pretty much treating daily on most patients that come in. We're not necessarily treating patients, but we're searching to find out whether or not they contain the superbug and whether or not we can have yet another outbreak. So these are major problems, the superbugs. Let's just go through this article a little bit and read a little bit more about it. Hospital wards need to be redesigned to provide urgently needed defences against the spread of deadly antibiotic resistant superbugs. That is the stark warning from scientists who say the danger now posed by drug resistant infections has reached crisis level. It has, believe me. In the long term, governments must encourage the pharmaceuticals industry to develop new generations of antibiotics, said a group of leading British experts. But these drugs will take so long to reach the market that short term measures must also be introduced to hold back the flood of resistant diseases that now threatens to overwhelm health professionals. The call comes amid growing global concern at levels of antibiotics Biotic resistance. A group of senior scientists, including Dame Sally Davies, the UK's Chief Medical Officer, and Professor Jeremy Farrar, Director of the Wellcome Trust, told the Royal Society that the planet faced the prospect of people dying from routine infections because effective antibiotics no longer existed. Changes could be made to hospital wards should they said, include greater distance between beds, lower bed occupancy rates, improved staff patient ratios and large openable windows. And we're talking about returning hospital wards to the type we had a hundred years ago, said Professor Kevin Kerr of Hull York Medical School. They had huge windows that let in sunlight, people. Sun. We must go back to getting sun on our wounds to help do the healing process. We actually have one of the best healing modalities available to us all free but we got told to keep out of the sun so it says here the crucial point of such old school measures is to buy time said fellow microbiologist we need to hold back the spread of resistant bacteria while finding ways to persuade pharmaceutical companies to improve their output of new generations of antibiotics for we are facing a future in which there might be no effective antibiotics left on the planet this next part is possibly the worst part of all. Kerr said, in the near future, it is possible that a scratch from a garden rose thorn could become septic. Without effective antibiotics, septicemia could easily set in and result in death. It is a terrible prospect, but a very real one. We are facing a return to the state of affairs that existed before antibiotics were discovered. Resistance to antibiotics arises as a consequence of the processes of natural selection. In a population of bacteria, some are more resistant to drugs than others, and occasionally these resilient strains survive, multiply, and become progressively more resistant to antibiotics. This is how superbugs, such as MRSA, that's one of the ones that we check for at work, have evolved. Scientists estimate there are now 5,000 deaths a year in the UK due to strains of bacteria that have evolved resistance to antibiotics. The continuing rise in resistance could have even wider repercussions. Surgery and treatment for diseases such as leukaemia would be very hard to carry out if there were no means to kill off random infections, which is exactly what these superbugs are. Yet only a handful of new antibiotics are in development. The major problem for medicine is that antibiotics, which are usually taken for about a week, listen to this, do not offer good returns to shareholders and pharmaceutical companies. Drugs that are taken long term, such as those to tackle diabetes or high blood pressure, offer a much better prospect of good profits. So this is all about greed. It's not that we can't make the antibiotics or that they can't be, uh, new ones can't be 
discovered and brought to life, it's that they're not profitable. Exactly what's going on here, everyone. This is something that could literally take humanity out. There's no need to worry about an asteroid or a meteorite, meteorite hitting us or climate change. It's more likely to be this. The urgent issue of persuading drug companies to develop new antibiotics should be tackled by the medical equivalent of a body like the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. They suggested companies be given tax breaks for making new antibiotics. Well, I guess if we have to um, give them some sort of offer to investigate the ongoing movement of new antibiotics, then we'll have to do it. Human greed. Penicillin by Alexander Fleming in 1928 and the subsequent development of antibiotics has revolutionized the treatment of infectious diseases. However, as their use has increased, bacteria have adapted and found ways to defend themselves. Bacteria are living organisms which evolve and are capable of adapting to defend themselves against antibiotics, thus rendering them ineffective. Some bacteria can defend themselves against several antibiotics, making them multi-resistant. There are three main methods of resistance. Mutation. An antibiotic has to fix itself to a target in order to react. If the target changes through mutation, it can prevent the antibiotic attaching itself. Example, tuberculosis is becoming resistant to streptomycin. Modification. Many multi-resistant strains produce an enzyme which can break down the antibiotic and render it ineffective. Example, resistance to penicillin. Repellents. The bacterium closes the pores through which the antibiotic enters the cell. Some bacteria are capable of expelling the antibiotic by pumping it out of the system, effectively spitting out the harmful element, as is the case with many hospital-generated opportunistic infections. So, ideally, the way to halt the progress of resistant bacteria is to curb the excessive use of antibiotics.